Where are you from originally? Toronto. The center of the universe. <laughs> so we think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, congratulations on Snake House. Very cool sounds. Thanks, man. Uh, I've just checked out the video here. 13,078 views on YouTube. Not bad. That's all right. Yeah. 111 people have put it in their favorites. That's fantastic. I didn't even know that. you got to love that new media. I know. eh? It's amazing. The clicks, the name, interesting. Anything behind that? Well, when I was trying to come up with a band name, I just decided that I needed to have it start with the... because all the great bands that I knew <laughs> did that. And then the other thing, we just wanted it to be a little something sexy, and uh, it was sort of a combination of uh, two body parts, so to speak. Ah, so we're right. Yeah, you're right. We you figured it. it out. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I just won 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> oh, man. All right, now, from what I'm reading here, I, I've said this to you know several other musicians. I've said if there was no pain or strife or sorrow, in the world, uh, we'd probably have a, a lot less great songs. And, and from what I'm reading here in your uh, your media bio, uh, you would not be a person to disagree with that. Is that right? I absolutely agree. I yeah. think it's just a natural part of uh, of being a human being. I mean, I don't think it's normal to not feel, you know, sadness and pain in this world. And I think people who try to do that are giving like or it's a disservice to yourself to not go into that because it makes you you know a, a better person so i know that i probably would have uh, been happier if i didn't have to go through all that stuff but uh, i came up with a pretty good album because of it so mm -hmm. everything happens for a reason you had some pretty serious things going on at one point and and pretty well all at the same time right yeah pretty much i just went through uh, a really bad breakup it was six and a half years, a relationship fell apart. After that happened, I started coming to terms with the fact that I was transgendered. After that happened, my father had a stroke. My grandmother died. One of my best friends was re-diagnosed with cancer. Two of my band members quit. And this all happened in a three-month span. Um, and uh, if I had decided that I was going to fall down and, and not get back up, then I wouldn't have recorded a good album. But uh, I think I just kind of took what I know as my strength and went on that and got myself to where I am now. Yeah. And this is not the band you started off with, right? No, not at all. We saw two other members, and the first bass player decided to quit because we started getting some popularity in Toronto, and she decided she didn't want to be in the limelight. It, it became quite clear to her. Really? The other, uh, the drummer decided she wanted to quit because she decided that she wanted to take the opportunity to go and do her own stuff. And then I had the lineup that's actually recorded on the album, which is Morgan Doctor, who is still my current drummer, thank God. She's phenomenal. And uh, Jordan quit about two and a half months ago because she wanted to do the exact same thing, go and do her own music. And um, along the way, we picked up Nina Martinez, who's playing guitar for us, and Jen Benton, who is now our bass player. Wow. I, I, I know. I had no idea there were musicians who didn't want to be in the limelight. It's, it seems like an oxymoron. Absolutely. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, what are you doing this for? <laughs> <Yeah>. You know? <laughs> for the art. Well, it wasn't for the art. I think she just quit altogether. Yeah. But yeah. I was just like, wow, man, it's just, it's so strange to be pumping away, playing for so long, and then all of a sudden you get to where you want to be, and you figure out that's not where you want to be. I was like, okay. Yeah. Well, to each his own, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, people are comparing you to the pretenders. How do you feel about that? Well, it's a pretty good comparison. If I'm going to be compared to anybody, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan, and, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I remember listening to The Pretenders with my sister, my older sister, and loved them. Um, so, yeah, I always say it's pretty much an honor. I think we are pretty much have our own sound, and we're a pretty unique-sounding uh, band, but, uh, hey, man, I'm not slacking that, that comparison at all. I guess <laughs> not. Yeah. I love Chrissy Hyde, by the oh, way. Oh, man. Severely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, when people find out along the line that you're transgendered, do you, uh, do you find that influences their opinion of your music at all, or are we past that sort of silliness now? I think we're pretty much past that. I mean, I think people think it's interesting because they don't come across people like me a lot, or at least they don't know they come across people mm. like me a lot. So if anything, it's just a matter of curiosity. Um, and I think it's something that at some point gets people intrigued into listening to the music 
Uh, but it's uh, interesting because I think as soon as they listen to the music, they completely forget about everything except for the fact that we're just a solid rock band. Yeah. And, uh, and they move on. And the thing is, it's just like the music is so universal that there's nothing about it that would a- alienate any audience. Um, and I think that that's what, what, what I think is so great about, about the music on this album, is that it's not focused on one sect of, of society or, you know, one lifestyle. It's, it's pretty much a worldly kind of uh, experience. How did you get hooked up with Mo Berg? Mo lives in Toronto and actually showed up at one of our shows when I was still with my old lineup um, with our manager, Jake Gold. And uh, I was actually trying to get Jake to manage us at the time. And uh, he first took a pass on us, but uh, Mo kept in contact and said he was very interested in recording an album with us. And at the time, we had just finished recording uh, the first Clicks album, and, uh, which was very, very independent. And uh, so about a year later, we had just kind of kept in touch back and forth. And I said, well, I'm ready if you're still willing. And he came on board. And there you go. And we all just, it, he's a great guy, too. You like the Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah, they're a yeah. good band. Yeah. Um, you managed to turn a Justin Timberlake song into a rock song. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> well, I always say a good song is a good song, and if it can carry over into another genre, that's when you know you have a really good song. Yeah. I think that that was the work of Justin, not me. I mean, I think what we did was we put I put my spin on it, and the band put their spin on it because we're a rock band, and... I just I really connected with the lyrics of the song because of the breakup that I'd want, gone through and really connected to the sentiment behind it. But I was a little bit more pissed off, I think, than he was, or at least what he was letting on in, in the genre that he plays. Mm-hmm. And I, I pretty much think that came across. I don't know if Justin gets pissed off. I think, I think he gets irked. <laughs> Probably. He seems like a really nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, best of luck to you. We we uh, love the music, and and we hope things go well for you. Not too well that you you know lose your edge, but no, uh, uh, I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> I, I'm too Portuguese and edgy for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for taking some time to, to uh, talk to me. I appreciate it. No problem, Scott. Thank you. Rock out. Well, thanks, man. Okay. Goodbye. Okay, oh yeah, oh yeah, falling down, but I can get up. 